Today I want to delve a little deeper into the statistics which are being pumped out now daily to drive the fear and to justify the increasing lockdowns and the measures which are being imposed upon us. And I don't think many people do delve into the statistics, the headline statistics that we are being told. But I think it's really, really important for us to understand what is being used to justify what is going on and to shine some light into the truth of the reality of the whole COVID situation. OK, I'm using ScreenFlow to record this and I'm going to pull up here. Uh, this is theguardian.com, 20th of October 2020. And this is their roundup of the coronavirus statistics. And their information is based on the government statistics. So here we go. The first graph here is the number of new corona cases per day in the UK. And you can see from this graph, here we are, uh, there's a, a curve in April, May and June, which mirrors the uh, initial stage. And this is up here, the alleged second wave, which is happening. So from September, you'll see it's climbing steeply in October. And we now have 18,804 new corona cases, coronavirus cases per day. Scary isn't it? Looking at that graph. Wow, definitely there's a real problem. There's a definite second wave on the way if you look at this graph. Okay, so let us look a little bit further down here. And uh, I quite like The Guardian because they do give a lot more detail than just headline statistics. So how much of the second wave is due to more testing? So this is a graph now which shows the UK testing. And you'll see that in March, April, May, there was very little testing and more tests were done in hospitals. So in, on the 8th of April, there were 14,423 tests done in hospitals and 5,865 were positive. But look here, look at how many more tests in the community are being done. Now, if you are open to these things, if you've seen the videos, you will have seen the army on the streets in places like Birmingham going from door to door and handing out tests to people at random saying, here, here's a coronavirus test, do it and send it off. So what we're seeing here now is 307,388 tests. This is the 19th of October. 307,388 tests. And here is the level of those that are positive. So this is positive tests, not cases. In the earlier graph, we are told cases, 18,804 cases. That's the headline figure. But here we go. This is actually positive tests. Can you see the correlation in these two lines? The massive increases in testing and the increases in positive tests. Now, at this stage, I want to uh, reiterate the um, uh, some of the information from the World Doctors Alliance. And here is what they say about PCR testing. Testing false positives. PCR tests cannot be verified for accuracy as there is no gold standard against which to check them. The virus has not been purified. PCR tests cannot detect viral loads and are prone to false positives. A positive PCR test does not mean that an individual is infected or nor infective. In fact, approximately 90% of the PCR positive cases are false positives. We therefore have no second wave and no pandemic. The government's report estimates a false positive rate of between 0.8 to 4% using data from other viral infections, not from COVID. Viral fragments may remain in people's bodies for several weeks following recovery from infection. The crisis will never end if we are waiting for zero positive tests. Everyone has probably had a cold 
caused by a coronavirus and were likely to have a few viral fragments matching those of the cousin SARS-CoV-2 virus. Testing healthy, asymptomatic individuals is nonsensical, unscientific and a colossal waste of money. The government's moonshot daily testing programme will cost 100 billion, roughly two-thirds of the annual NHS budget. Antibody testing is not the gold standard, as many people have T-cell immunity and antibodies may not circulate following recovery from infection. So even if we do go by these PCR tests, which uh, are the basis of the statistics, they are highly questionable. So that is the information about PCR testing. Now let us go on to the uh, hospitalizations. So this is the graph of the total number of people in hospital for coronavirus each day. Total number of confirmed coronavirus patients in hospital on the reporting date. And here you can see that in April, May, June, July, August, September, October, it starts to creep up and now it's at 5,608. What is not made clear is that if you get admitted to hospital with any condition, a heart attack, appendicitis, and you are then tested positive for coronavirus, you are counted as someone in hospital for coronavirus. So once again, these statistics are hugely misleading. And once again, they mirror that curve of increased testing. So we have to be really careful here about being frightened by this second wave. So we have 5,608 people in hospital who have tested positive for coronavirus. So 5,608 people out of a, a UK population of 60 million, a tiny, tiny, tiny proportion, and not necessarily people who have been hospitalised because of COVID. And now let us look at the UK number of coronavirus deaths per day. Here's the statistics in March, April, May, June, you see a massive drop and now it's climbing. And now we have 80 people per day, bearing in mind that 9,600 people per month die in the UK. And we have 80 people per day dying of coronavirus. So the key thing to understand about this statistic, number of coronavirus deaths per day, this is the annotation underneath. These figures count people who have tested positive for COVID-19 and died within 28 days of their first positive test. So let's have a look at what the World Doctors Alliance says about death certificates. The majority of people who died had significant comorbidities such as Alzheimer's, cancer, cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Counting death certificates with a mention of COVID as being a death caused by COVID is a gross misrepresentation of the facts and has vastly over-exaggerated the death toll. The rules for the signing of death certificates have been changed solely for COVID by the Coronavirus 2020 Act. Doctors do not even need to have physically seen the patient in order to sign death certificates. Autopsies have virtually been banned, no doubt leading to misdiagnosis of the true cause of deaths and also reducing our understanding of the disease itself. Worse still, Care home staff who largely have no medical training are able to give a statement as to the cause of death. COVID was put on death certificates merely on the suspicion of people having COVID. This may well be unlawful since it is a crime to falsify death certificates. People who die within 28 days of a positive PCR test are deemed to have died from COVID, even if they die in a car crash or from a heart attack, clearly over inflating the death toll. So once again, we are being driven into fear because 80 people per day at the moment are dying because COVID is mentioned on their death certificate. It's a tiny, tiny amount. And if you consider 320 people die every day um, in this country, the people who tested positive of coronavirus are included as a coronavirus death. So we have to be really, really clear about the, these death 
figures which are being pumped out by the government to create fear. The final thing that I want to have a look at is the UK map of cases. The, the deeper the colour red, the more the rate per 100,000 people. And so you can see here in the areas like Liverpool, like Manchester, in these northwestern areas in particular, this is where the current um, challenges are happening. And today it looks like Manchester is going to be pushed into a third tier category lockdown, creating huge amounts of consternation. You'll see that Wales, which has gone into this firebreaker lockdown, actually is one of the lightest pink areas, less than 170 people per 100,000 people. That means, uh, let me get my maths right, 99,830 people do not have COVID. I mean, this is, it, it's crazy, folks. This is, this is really crazy. So here we go, we've got 800, more than 850 people per 100,000 in the deep red areas, which means that 99,150 people out of every 100,000 have not tested positive for coronavirus. Now, I want to just bring up here, let me just see if I can just shrink this along and bring up here the map of the general election results of 2019. Just ha take a look at the correlation between those areas of Liverpool and Manchester and those northwest areas and the correlation between the Labour constituencies and the areas being locked down. And bear in mind that in those areas you have huge numbers of factory workers, pe the people who are getting our food to us who are unable to be on Zoom calls and do their work from home. So these are factory workers who are the lifeblood of this country, who are loading up the juggernauts, who are getting the food into our supermarkets. And I have to say that my big concern as I watch this unfolding and having been a, a, a witness in the 1980s um, and witnessing things like the Toxteth riots. What is brewing here is very dangerous because it's becoming a Tory versus Labour struggle. It is um, stoking the conditions for uprisings. Already lots of people in Liverpool are speaking out, lots of people are defying the ban, all the gym owners in Liverpool. We're creating the conditions for a civil war in this country. We have to see all of this as part of a much bigger master plan. Maybe this is being stoked deliberately to try to create uprisings, riots, so that the government has the justification in the interests of keeping us safe to introduce much more stringent measures for people who speak out, for people who stand up, for people like me who are making videos like this. Every time I make one of these videos, I have to consider that I am taking a huge personal risk in speaking out about what is going on. However, I do absolutely feel that we have to speak out now because the, the mainstream media isn't doing it. Someone has to point out that this is social engineering to drive fear, to drive division, and to drive through a much bigger agenda. So just in conclusion, it's clear that these statistics which are being pumped out daily are distorted and are being used to generate fear, to drive a much larger master plan. And I'm not gonna go into detail on that in this video because I, I've made several videos about that over the past weeks. I made one two days ago called Rachel's Rabbit Hole Roundup, which talked about the Great Reset, written by Klaus Schwab, which it's apparent that all of the governments of the world have signed up to. So please do have a look at those other videos if you want to delve deeper into the larger picture of what this is part of. 
you will note that I don't include any keywords in the titles of these videos nor in the descriptions specifically because I don't want to get banned by YouTube or Facebook. It's clear that big tech is linked into big pharma for this bigger um, global reset, which is why there is so much censorship now and suppression um, by the big tech platforms of this content because if enough people speak out, it's going to derail this master plan. So I am relying on you to share this video to get this information out so we can create conscious awareness to what is unfolding right now. So sending you lots of love. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.